Hello, I'm Pilgrim Beard of Device Pilot, and today I'm very pleased to welcome Harriet Allman Carter of Lightsource Labs to share her experiences in smart energy. Welcome, Harriet. Thank you. Nice to be here. So, can you just tell us a little bit to start with about how you you got started in smart energy in your career? Yes. Yeah. So. Um... My, my career has been pretty energy um, industry centric so far. Um, I started off with an industrial placement part of my university degree at the um, Department of Energy and Climate Change, which is now um, Bayes. Um, I was managing the emergency stocks of oil at the time and, and monitoring kind of that on a, on a UK and EU basis. Um, after uni, I, I joined the Centrica graduate program. So I did lots of placements around the different parts of their business, um, mostly their retail arms, so British Gas and Hive. And then after that, I joined Hive, which you're familiar with, Pilgrim, um, to manage the uh, the British Gas Engineer sales channel. So um, managed around 8,000 engineers, the, the selling of Hive. Um, and then I joined Lightsource Labs. So now I look after the... Um, the business development for Lightsource like Labs in the UK, essentially getting Tribe, which is our product, out to market. Um, we're all very early, early stages and haven't quite um, kind of rolled out yet. So that's my my job. Okay, so so tell us a little bit more about that. So how, how does Lightsource fit into the the smart energy landscape? What is it exactly? Because I mean the the name Lightsource is all and, and the um, you know originally came from a sort of solar thing, I think. But but it's a lot more than just solar, isn't it? Yes, yeah. So, so we sit as part of the Lightsource BP group. Um, Lightsource BP have a quite a different remit to us. We, um, well, they look after utility scale solar development. So, um, we've got sites all over the globe now, um, kind of, um, yeah, expanding really rapidly, which is really great. Um, BP own a fifty percent share, so hence the Lightsource BP. And Lightsource Labs sit wholly within Lightsource BP, but but we look after the the smart energy management side of things, and we we tend to focus on residential assets at the moment. So, um, I guess why why that's important is at a household level. Um, the our, our energy management technology enables people to to save money and become more energy efficient um it enables them kind of longer term to be able to respond to the volatility and the tariff pricing that they're going to start to see over over time um at, at macro levels so when you kind of um look at the really big picture what this enables us to do is is to be able to more effectively balance that supply so that really kind of peaky intermittent um, natured uh, renewable generation that, that we want to have more of um, and the, the increased um, consumption of electricity that we're going to see through uh, electric vehicles and, and things like heat pumps. Um, so yeah, it's really kind of just, uh, I guess, enabling us to more effectively manage that energy system on a kind of more, more flexible level, really. Great. And in terms of nomenclature and stuff, I think you briefly mentioned Tribe just now, but but what is, what is Tribe? Is Tribe a sort of a home energy management hub, essentially, and a cloud platform that's connected to it? That's Yeah, that's exactly it. So, so Tribe consists of a, a, a physical piece of hardware called the Tribe Hub. Um, it, that gets installed into the home. It gets um, connected to a range of different uh, flexible assets that you want to control, essentially. So things like um, your residential battery, um, your EV charging. Um, we're not so relevant here, but in Australia, um, things like um, air conditioning units, um, solar PV, that kind of thing. Um, it consists of a, a user app. So, so the user can go in and monitor and control their devices from an app. Um, and, and Tribe also consists of a sort of backend fleet management platform, which partners such as utilities and installers and um, housing developers can go in and they can manage their fleet of assets and also control them um, in aggregate. So um, respond to sort of grid, grid signals or um, you know, calls for flexibility, for example, um, from network operators um, for, from, a, from a range of assets in aggregate. Mm. So they don't kind of have to go in and, and do it all individually. It's um, yeah. Yeah, an easy and are, are those utilities and so on your main sort of channels to market? I mean, that's mainly how you get into people's homes through through utilities that we all know, like, like British Gas and so on? Yeah, so... So we see a lot of value through utilities and that's definitely um, where 
we see the mo- we, we see the most value because there's value for the end customer. There's also value for the for the utility because they can almost um, respond to the volatility in the wholesale prices. Um, and also they can enter assets because they've got suppliers licenses. They can enter assets into other markets, so the wholesale markets and capacity markets and things like that. Um, there's also other routes to market. So, um, like I mentioned earlier, you know, you've got the housing developers, um, we've got installers. So, so people that are installing solar and battery and EV charging and heat pumps and things like that into homes. That's that's a big one, and and that's that's one that um, at the moment because the utilities market is quite um, sort of difficult. Um, that's that's the one that we're kind of um, yeah see, seeing more kind of. Um, I guess demand from at the moment. Um, what other things that we look at? Housing associations are another potential future option. You know, I think that's probably a bit bit further into the future with them. Yeah. So just t- touching on the um, uh, the idea, you know, you mentioned that the energy markets are, are quite challenging at the moment. In the UK, we've got these price caps that uh, make it quite hard for for um, utilities to compete with each other on price. So you kind of mm. think, well, they're presumably going to have to compete on some other other basis. I mean, do you, do you agree? With that analysis, I mean, do you think in some ways a, a world where energy prices are high and there's a lack of co- a price competition is actually quite a nice landscape for offerings like yours? Because you can come in there and differentiate. You can actually help people to, to control their energy costs by managing managing energy. Absolutely. Yeah, I guess, I guess it's two part, really. You know, the, there's the point of differentiation. So. Um, typically energy suppliers kind of specialise in electricity and gas and and that's it. Um, and there's very little, like you say, other than price to differentiate those two those two products. Um, so it's it's really good for energy suppliers to, to differentiate their, their product offering, um, to attract customers and retain customers, especially in that way. Um, but but also I think where we where we think the value where we know the value is for energy suppliers is actually being able to um, intelligently um, supply that customer because they can supply that customer at a time that suits them Um, for example you know really really um, low import pricing um, periods you can supply that customer you can charge up the battery or you can charge up the EV charger at a time that suits that energy supplier and it makes no difference to the customer Um, it essentially just enables them in a in a world where you've got a price cap it enables them to reduce their costs and therefore increase their margins Um, so yeah I think kind of moving forward this kind of technology is going to be going to be important especially if there is a price cap um, for energy suppliers to be able to kind of have a profitable business um, in this kind of, yeah, regulated market. Yeah, and it sounds, you know, from what you're saying, I almost imagine a world where instead of people thinking about buying units of energy, you know, as a consumer, I'm thinking about buying the services of having my home well heated, having my yeah. EV charged, uh, and so on, which is actually the service I care about. You know, energy is just a kind of intermediary. And to some extent, if, if I was less aware of, of the units, that would probably be a good thing all around. Absolutely, yeah. And we're starting to see that. So the likes of Avo, um, they've got a EV charging uh, tariff. I can't quite remember it's, what it's called, but they're essentially using um, an intelligent charger um, to um, charge up that 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 car, that EV, um, at a time which suits the um, the energy supplier. So at the, at the time where the wholesale prices are lowest, um, and the customer gets a flat rate during that during a kind of set period, but that that charger can operate at any time during that set period to be able to um, essentially optimize according to cost for that energy supplier. So so we are starting to see more innovative um, offerings in the market. Um, but they're kind of few and far between at the moment. So we're really sort of excited to, to kind of be part of that, that transition and, um, yeah, be part of that change um, for customers. Mm, quite an interesting dance there because I can see that in order for the, the, the situation you described to work, the, the customer would have to leave their car plugged in for a good Again. chunk of time yeah. to then be able to charge it when when Ovo wants to. Um, and that, that kind of made, 
made me recollect a little bit about the, the journey we went on with, with my previous company, Alert Me and Hive, about sort of bringing the customer much closer, the relationship between mm -hmm. the service provider and the customer gets much much closer because there's a degree of sort of collaboration required for mutual benefit. Interesting. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so so lots of exciting things to do. I would guess at the moment your numbers are relatively small still and, and there's still lots of market experiments and technology experiments going on. Um, but clearly the, the opportunity here is to get into the into the millions um, and, and have a really dramatic effect on uh, you know achieving net zero and so on, which is very exciting. What what kind of challenges are you facing um, as, as a company in actually getting that done, in actually getting sort of home energy management rolled out at scale? Yeah, so there's quite a few, as you can probably imagine, um, with an early, early stage technology and early stage market. Um, one of the, the things that the main things that we're kind of focusing on, on is actually getting our technology to be as compatible um, with with a range of different technologies as possible. So as agnostic as we can get it. Um, we think that's really important because it enables the likes of utilities to be able to optimize various different manufacturers um, without you know needing to worry about what's installed. Um, however, we're finding that integration work quite tricky because there's no kind of standardization of protocols and no kind of common common way to do that. Um, for example, the, the, the EV chargers, we're, we're following a, the open charge point protocol um, 1.6, OCPP 1.6. But, but what we're finding is that manufacturers implement that in a different way. So that almost mm. requires a bespoke integration um, work for each manufacturer. And that's really kind of time consuming. And often you kind of uncover little little niggles each 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 phase that you go through. Um, so I think some kind of standardized standardized approach would be really good. Um, the next one, which um, I think is is another crucial thing is is the, the ability to settle half hourly, so the ability um, for, for electricity providers to, to um, reconcile the difference between what they think they've supplied and what actually the customer has, has used in the home. Um, at the moment, that's happening at nowhere near that, that level. Most, most electricity providers um, yeah, don't offer that for, for any of their customers. There are a few. So um, the likes of Octopus Energy are doing it with their agile and outgoing tariff, which um, are tariffs that change every half an hour. But really, we need that half hourly settlement market wide um, to be able to unlock the value of this kind of technology and to be able to offer more innovative um, tariff offerings. And am I right um, in, in saying that that is it 2025 that's a magic date for half hourly settlement across yeah, the whole market? So what suppliers have to be able to to offer that by then? Is that, that's, is that Yeah, that's that's the mm. date that kind of Offshem um, has, has put in the ground, 2025. But mm -hmm. Um, we'd really love that to be brought forward. Mm. That's you know three years away. Just looking at the the date down there. Um, so so yeah, I think that that's kind of crucial that that is if we can get that further forward. So brilliant. so on that note, I mean, you 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 presumably smart meters are a sort of key part of mm. of that story. Then uh, is that absolutely is that yeah mm -hmm. yeah. So 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 the the kind of. Um, the dumb meters don't offer that ability. Obviously, they're they're just kind of um, you, you're required to submit a meter reading, or somebody comes in and, and reads it for you. Um, smart meters are kind of the cru the crucial thing that we need to unlock that ability to half hourly settle because they provide data on a more regular basis to that energy supplier. I mean, do you, do you? Yeah, I can see that. Do you? Is your kind of connection to the smart meter going? Are you going to be talking to smart meters locally? I mean, it is possible to do that, or or is it more just that you'll be kind of managing? You'll know which tariff a customer is on, therefore you'll know via the cloud kind of yeah. what's going on with their their sort of static uh, time of use pricing or dynamic uh, sort of agile pricing, um, and and the smart meter then kind of is the thing that that actually does the measurement and provides the fiscal kind of yeah. auditable auditable numbers at the end but it's yeah. not you don't have to talk directly to the smart meter in the home in order to to, to do the to do the management yeah no that's that's absolutely right so we've got our own metering capabilities within the mm. tribe hub but but that's not kind of talking to the utility in in any any kind of way um and um yeah no yeah that's absolutely right okay interesting uh, so any other challenges about rolling out that you can think of yeah, so I think the other um, the other big one is at the moment we've developed a piece of hardware to um, essentially 
like I said just now, actually, because it, because it's got the metering requirements and it's got the processing power within it that we need in order to have these kind of finer resolution response times and, and more real time response times. Um, in an ideal world, we would just integrate our software directly with the likes of the EV charger or the residential battery or the heat pump or whatever that is. But but what we're finding is those um, manufacturers don't don't have the the metering requirements that we need. Um, to, to, to kind of do those those more real time responses and to enter things like the frequency response markets, um, and and what we would love is um, in order to kind of reduce cost for everybody is to be able to integrate our software directly either via the cloud or um, embedding our software within their device. Um, so yeah, kind of having those um, having those kind of those those the metering requirements and the processing power um, within the device itself is something that we're we're really looking to have um, from from manufacturers. Yeah, I've heard a number of interesting things recently about what could be called sort of, I suppose, behind the meter, so, sort of sub-metering or whatever. And I, I saw in um, some UK EV um, charging standards that it, the um, I think the chargers are going to have to enable, they're going to have to be able to do metering themselves. Is that? Is that sub-metering, the yeah. There's a, um, mm. this is where I need to brush up on my knowledge, but there's a, something called P375, um, which which enables people to essentially meter at an asset level rather than the, the, the boundary. Um, and that will enable people to, um, yeah, kind of um, understand at an asset level what what each asset is using and be able to, to enter assets um, into different markets that are kind of um, individual basis. So things like the balancing mechanism and things like that. Mm. Um, so yes, that's um, again probably something I need to brush up on, but, no, but that is coming down the line. <laughs> no, I mean it's 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 long it's long been surprising to me if you look at the amount of uh, money that we all spend on energy, the, the complete lack of transparency that we have into what it's going into. There's no no other area of our life where we happily hand over you know, certainly more than a thousand pounds a year, a lot more than that for some people, uh, without any real idea what it's, uh, what it's going on. So, um, yeah, clearly, yeah. Uh, you know, ripe for more sort of itemized billing, I suppose. So, yeah. so, so finally, it's been really interesting discussion, Harriet, really appreciate your time. I mean, finally, just, um, just looking ahead a bit, we've talked about uh, 2025 for half hourly. Um, any other, any other kind of dates that are coming up in terms of the, the sort of changing landscape legislation or technology or anything? Yeah, so so yeah, the, the kind of market wide half hourly settlement 2025 is a big one for us. Um, there's also a kind of um, a range of different things that are happening in the new build market, with, which we think will be quite instrumental. So it's just been announced that um, EV charging will be mandated and is mandated from 2022. So um, that's something that um, new build developers are going to have to contend with and, and network operators are going to have to contend with. Um, similarly, the um, the kind of uh, introduction of, of the new home standards or the future home standard um, is going to be um, mandating that no gas boilers will will be installed by 2025 from 2025 onwards. Um, so that's kind of going to drive the the adoption of heat pumps, and and that's something actually that's really helping to shape our roadmap, our product roadmap in terms of integration. So so this year we'll be focusing on on integrations with both EV chargers and heat pumps as a consequence of these kind of regulatory changes. Um, there's also um, things like the boiler upgrade scheme for for consumers, which provides um, essentially grants for people to be able to um, change their their gas boilers for heat pumps. Uh, I think it's £5,000. So um, that will kind of really help, again, to drive drive the uptake and drive the uptake of the technologies that we're relying on in order to kind of um, implement and make the most of our technology, our energy management technology. Yeah, I suppose there's another date that's coming up. I think the end of March, we're seeing the end of the um, the grant subsidy for EV charging installations outside people's homes, and and it's been it's very interesting to watch the effects of those those grants. Um, I, I remember back in the day with solar PV on people's homes, and government was really struggling to get that right, and was turning things on and off very quickly with short notice, and and causing you know it was a, it was a kind of rough ride for the industry, I think. But but there's been a lot of learning from that, I think, and um, clearly the these grants do accelerate. 
um, going down the learning curve and getting this technology mature and, and, and cost effective and, and then it can really just take off by itself. Well, Harriet, this has been a fantastic uh, discussion, exploration of the landscape. Very, very exciting indeed. And I'm really grateful to you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.